Greetings world. We are anonymous. Millions of people use Google every single day. To search for anything and everything. News articles. T-shirts. And even illegal downloads of their favorite television shows. Google is the most widely used search engine in the United States and Europe and still has a widespread hold across global search. Search engines in much of the internet are based on the principle that the more people care about, search for, or visit something it'll rise to the top of the search results and be seen by more people. Popular search engines have an autocomplete function so as you type something it's attempting to answer your question for you before you even finish. And we assume that the results and recommendations offered by that autocomplete are things that people have actually been searching for. When you put 79 divided by 5 into Google it's always 15.8. When you ask how do you make pizza dough you're going to get a bunch of recipes of how to make pizza dough. Because of that principle there is an inherent trust that when you search for something on Google, you are seeing the actual factual answer to your query or question based at least in part in the result to what other people are actually searching for. In the case of Hillary Clinton who clinched the Democratic nomination, we know for a fact that is not the case. Google has been actively altering search recommendations in favor of Hillary Clinton's campaign. When we type in Hillary Clinton CRI into Google, the site's autocomplete function shows three potential searches. Hillary Clinton crime reform, Hillary Clinton crisis, and Hillary Clinton crime bill 1994. However, when you type the same term, Hillary Clinton CRI, into Google's competitors Bing and Yahoo, you get very different results. Focusing on whether or not Hillary Clinton has ever committed a crime. There is clearly something wrong here with Google's results, right? So what's going on here? Maybe people are just searching different things on Google than on Yahoo or Bing. Wrong. When we check for Hillary Clinton crime reform, the top result from Google earlier, there aren't even enough searches of the term Hillary Clinton crime reform to build a graph on the site, which begs the question, why on the earth is it the first potential result on Google? For comparison we added a second term, Hillary Clinton crimes. Look what Google gave back. Apparently far more people are searching for Hillary Clinton crimes than Hillary Clinton crime reform. Google just doesn't want you to know or ask on their search engine. But maybe we're still wrong. We tried it again. This time to see if Hillary Clinton's much discussed potential indictment by the FBI would show up. When you type Hillary Clinton IND into Bing or Yahoo, there are plenty of indictment based results. When you type it into Google the top two recommended results are Hillary Clinton Indiana and Hillary Clinton India. Could people really be searching more for Hillary Clinton India than Hillary Clinton indictment? When we check both Hillary Clinton India and Hillary Clinton indictment graphs we can see people are searching for Hillary Clinton indictment 8% more often than Hillary Clinton India. The intention is clear. Google is burying potential searches for terms that could have hurt Hillary Clinton in the primary elections in the past several months by manipulating search results on their site. In addition we searched for negative terms that have been associated with Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump on all three sites. Google matches both Bing and Yahoo for Donald Trump rack, showing the top two results Donald Trump racist speeches and Donald Trump racist news. No visible tampering. Google's bias here is undeniable but how did this happen? Why? Who is responsible? There are a stunning number of links between Google and Hillary Clinton's campaign and they all stem to one person. Eric Schmidt, the executive chairman of Google's parent company Alphabet Inc. and former CEO of Google is a major funder of the groundwork, which is, according to sources, an investment by Schmidt to ensure Hillary Clinton has the technological and engineering crowds to win the election. The groundwork's specialty is data analytics and targeted outreach. That's what we have for now. Search everyone for information arm yourselves. Let's start over look at the facts. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. Expect us. It is destructive, particularly for a Democrat, to be discrediting universal health care by 
waging a false campaign. He does eliminate the Affordable Care Act, eliminates private insurance, eliminates Medicare, eliminates Medicaid, TRICARE, Children's Health Insurance Program. We don't eliminate Medicare. We expand Medicare to all people. Since when do Democrats attack one another on universal health care? Back in 1994, you said that momentum for a single-payer system would sweep the country. That sounds Sanders-esque, uh, but you don't feel that way anymore. Why well, not? the revolution never came. <laughs> I waited. They even managed to buy off old foes. For her silence, Hillary was rewarded, and she became the second largest recipient in the Senate of health care industry contributions. Well, but you don't feel that way anymore. Why well, not? the revolution never came. Which enemy are you most proud of? Well, in addition to the NRA, uh, the health insurance companies, the drug companies, the health insurance companies, the drug companies. I never took a position on Keystone until I took a position on Keystone. We're either going to be dependent right. on dirty oil from the Gulf or dependent on dirty oil from Canada. As president, would you sign a bill allowing the Keystone XL pipeline? If it's undecided when I become president, I will answer your question. <laughs> when Hillary Clinton becomes secretary of state, Bill Clinton gives 10 speeches for about $2 million for a bank called TD Bank Investment Group, one of the largest shareholders in Keystone XL Pipeline. Three months later, Hillary Clinton greenlights the pipeline. I never took a position on Keystone. Is he a traitor or a hero? He broke the laws of the United States. He could have been a whistleblower. He could have gotten all of the protections of being a whistleblower. He could have raised all the issues that he has raised. And I think there would have been a positive response uh, to that. Well, first of all, there are not that many channels for national security and intelligence whistleblowers. They are excluded from most avenues available to other whistleblowers. But second of all, Tom Drake and Bill Binney, Kirk Wiebe, and Ed Loomis did go through the proper channels, and all of them fell under criminal investigation for having done so. You know, when I left law school, my first job was with the Children's Defense Fund. Well, you know, Hillary Clinton's an old friend, but they're not friends in politics. We we profoundly disagreed with the forms of the, ch of the welfare reform bill. By the time Bill and I left the White House, welfare rolls had dropped 60 percent. You know, many years after that, when many people are pronouncing welfare reform a great success, you know, we've got growing child poverty. The poor are suffering. My first job was with the Children's Defense Fund. Welfare rolls had dropped 60 percent. I'm sorry to say uh, what I thought would happen has happened. This was a blunderbuss. This was just just an axe, a hatchet. Six million, two percent of our population have no income except those food stamps. The food stamps is the, is the sole thing that stands between them and, and, and being totally without uh, any income. Welfare rolls had dropped 60 percent. Yeah, I think it's absurd to suggest she's a friend of uh, children who are in need or families. This is a woman who, when her husband was governor, I first met her at that time when I went down to interview him for the Los Angeles Times, and he was starting his presidential run. And they were bragging about their welfare reform, which destroyed uh, what existed of, of support for poor children in, in Arkansas. Then as president, uh, her husband, with her full-throated approval, uh, destroyed the aid to families with dependent children, which 70 percent of the people on that program were children. They destroyed that program, and we, 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 have no, we don't even have an accounting of poor children anymore. They're all, uh, off the radar. He was going to give immunity to the only industry in America. <laughs> only industry in America. Do you want to shield gun companies from lawsuits of course or not? not? Just for the record, are you a progressive or are you a moderate? I'm a progressive. I take a backseat to no one when you look at my record and standing up and fighting for progressive values. You know, I get accused of being kind of moderate and center. I plead guilty. Well, why do they make millions of dollars of campaign contributions? They expect to get something. Everybody knows that. I represented New York, and I represented New York on 9-11. 
when we were attacked, where were we attacked? We were attacked in downtown Manhattan where Wall Street is. What about our traffic problem? Nine. Huh? Eleven. <laughs> I represented Wall Street as a senator from New York, and I went to Wall Street in December of 2007, before the big crash that we had, and I basically said, cut it out. Quit foreclosing on homes. Now, who's exactly to blame for the housing crisis? I think there's plenty of uh, blame to go around. Home buyers who paid extra fees to avoid documenting their income should have known they were getting in over their heads. We cannot keep imprisoning more people than anybody else in the world. This bill would have put more police on the street, would have locked up violent offenders so they never could get out again, uh, would have given more prison construction money. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. We can talk about why they ended up that way, but first we have to bring them to heel. Well, actually, I have been very consistent over the course of my entire life. Um, you know, take the trade deal. We are making progress toward finalizing a far-reaching new trade agreement called the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The so-called TPP will lower barriers, raise standards, and drive long-term growth across the region. Now looking back on it, it doesn't have the results we thought it would have in terms of access to the markets, right. more exports, etc. So are you saying that as of today, this is not something you could support? As of today, um, I am not uh, in favor. You supported his trade deal dozens of times. You even called it the gold standard. Now, suddenly last week, you're against it. I did say when I was Secretary of State three years ago that I hoped it would be the gold standard. And she said, I had hoped back then that it would right. become the gold standard. She said it was the gold she standard. She called it the gold over standard. Over and over yeah, again. She supported no it unequivocally. I have been very consistent over the course of my entire life. Colombia has the highest rate of killings of trade unionists in the world. I oppose the deal, I will vote against the deal, and I will do everything I can to urge the Congress to reject the Colombian free trade deal. It's the largest uh, independently controlled oil company in Colombia. Delivered uh, a couple million bucks to the Clinton Foundation. Uh, she changed her position. One of our top goals is to complete free trade agreements with Colombia and Panama.